Hey, this is Steve, V6WZ. Hey, I want to share with you a little project I just finished building. It's a little uh, band stop filter, 160 meter band stop filter. Perhaps a bit unusual for most hams. I uh, have recently got interested in medium wave broadcast band DXing. And I have a Perseus radio and I uh, record uh, the uh, medium wave band during the night. Problem is I got a conflict. I'm often transmitting on 160 meters and um, that basically I mute the Perseus radio that's normally recording at that time. So I lose a lot of my recording recording when I'm transmitting. So I thought, look, I'm going to build a band stop filter and see if I can uh, be able to continue to transmit uh, or rather continue to receive on the Perseus while transmitting with this thing in front of the uh, SDR. So I built this little um, band pass filter. I'm just adjusting it here now. Uh, look, um, what I wanted to do is uh, share with you guys and show you the method I use for designing this thing using a great online uh, calculator, and then basically the construction method and tuning uh, of the filter, dialing it in uh, using uh, both the oscilloscope and a signal generator, as well as my mini VNA to actually measure the parameters, the amount of attenuation uh, at uh, at the notch. The truth is, you know, you could use this for anything. Building a, a more likely, uh, more needed would be perhaps a, uh, a band pass filter for 160 meters if you wanted to eliminate broadcast band overload on some of your uh, 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 amplifiers. Anyway, let's get started. I'll show you what I did here. I'm sure there are many different uh, calculators online. Well, I know there are for calculating the component values for uh, uh, filters, but I found that Dale's website, wa4dsy.net, is uh, really good. And well, it's what I've used and it worked really well. I think he's done a great job here. Uh, you can navigate to his page, wa4dsy.net. As you can see here under filter design, he's got design, low uh, LC, high pass, low pass, band pass filters. So you go to his page here, and uh, in my case, um, you know, you could choose to, to build uh, a low pass or high pass filters. In my case, I wanted a, a band stop filter. So uh, here you'll uh, just uh, choose band stop. Uh, you could choose how many poles. I chose a six pole filter and um, I chose uh, the frequency I was interested in, 160 meters. And I chose a 300 uh, kilohertz uh, bandwidth, you know, a dB bandwidth, uh, you know, 3 dB half power bandwidth. You can choose these uh, however you want, obviously, and just say compute part. So that gives you a couple choices here as to which one uh, you know you would you you could choose um, uh, depending on whether you want a low impedance uh, for the um, the signals input output on the in the stop band uh, or whether you want high impedance uh, uh, high impedance on uh, over the stop band frequency. I chose high impedance and uh, then you have a couple of choices. You can use a Butterworth type component values of the uh, Chebyshev or a Bessel. I chose Bessel, but here's what's really cool. You can see if you scroll down, that he actually uh, plots and shows uh, the actual, uh, cur you know, uh, performance curve for the uh, filters and actually um, uh, quotes and, and notes the specific uh, dB attenuation and loss values. So in this case, it's the Butterworth. Uh, in this case, it's the uh, Chebyshev. And, and here's the one I chose. I just thought this one looked a little bit uh, better. <laughs> Heck, I could experiment and try it with different ones. But this is the bezel uh, filter approximation. You know, and it looks like it had really good attenuation at the uh, at the stop band. So anyway, um, you know, great great resource. And so here's my component values. You know, it shows the, all the inductors that I uh, inductor values and capacitor values I needed. You know, this could drive you too, looking at what kind of components you have in your junk box. That might point you to which uh, filter design you choose to use. So after I selected my final design from the online calculator. I decided to use the dead bug mount method. It's pretty, uh, pretty simple way to do things, and I've used it before on filters. Um, basically, you'll, I'll be, I'll make uh, copper pad mounts, uh, pads. Uh, for every common connection node, if you if you see what I mean, uh, so I took a piece of copper clad uh, board uh, and we just scored the copper off of the board to make these uh, isolated pads. You know, I just used a Dremel tool, a simple Dremel tool with a uh, rotating. Uh, blade on it to just score out the copper clad. In fact, here's the board. I don't know if you can see it. It's kind of hard now that I've already mounted it on, but you can see where I've I've uh, I've cut the uh, the copper out and made isolated mounting uh, pads uh, for the uh, for the components. 
Winding the coils is pretty simple. I used the Amidon uh, Type T50-2 uh, uh, toroids as well as the uh, T50-3 uh, 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 toroids. But, you know, uh, great resource to go online and look at the Amidon uh, website. It can tell you exactly, uh, you know, which, which core would be best for the amount of inductance you need. And it'll tell you how many uh, uh, microhenries per turn to get you started. But ultimately, I ended up doing some measurements. Let me show you how I did that. I'll start by using the Amidon website and the data for the specific core to determine how many turns I should use uh, for, the, for the required inductance. But ultimately, I use uh, uh, my analyzer to uh, test, the, test the actual value. It's surprising. Even the little rig expert uh, is pretty, pretty accurate. One thing you must do, though, is do a calibration at the end uh, of your uh, test leads. I just have a little piece of coax here with a couple of clip leads which doesn't seem to be as though it'd be very accurate, but you know, honestly, it's, uh, it's really, it works pretty, gets you pretty close. You select all parameters uh, and then press OK and press start. So if I let go of this, you can see it's, you know, you know, micro Henry's of stray uh, inductance, which, you know, we only need to get close. So for example, I can hook up this, this little toroid here and, uh, you know, and then we can have a look at what we're seeing. You know, we see about 3.8 microhenries. And, you know, stretching these apart and bringing them together uh, can significantly change uh, that inductance. And in fact, that's how we'll tune it later once it's in the, uh, once it's in the filter. But generally, this, uh, this got me real close and was, uh, was a good way to confirm the inductance I'm expecting from the individual uh, inductors. For the capacitors over the years, I've made a habit of collecting, uh, you know, a real selection of uh, mica caps. These are these are great. I've got lots of different values, and uh, you know, I'm usually able to to find what I need, especially for uh, little RF filters and things like that. Uh, what I would do as well, though, you know, to the extent I needed to parallel some values, I'd even slap them on the analyzer as well, just to confirm the expected capacitance from, uh, you know, parallel caps. What I've got here now, of course, is my final design. And in fact, I, I can't show you too much because I've already included the um, uh, Q-dope uh, paint on these inductors to prevent the coils from uh, moving. But when I was moving the coils, you know, I could really change the, uh, the uh, response curve on, on the scope. The test system I use, I, I really encourage you to look at another video I have. I'll put the link for that video on the bottom uh, of this video. But I explain how I set up the signal generator uh, in sweep mode uh, together with the uh, sync or trigger function out of the back, which is a square wave trigger, uh, and uh, uh, hook that up to the scope in order to uh, sweep the frequency I want. Uh, essentially, I've got the, the uh, signal generator every millisecond. In this case, I've got it set from sweeping from 1.5 megahertz for, to 2 megahertz. And uh, I've got that uh, spanning across the entire face of the oscilloscope the way I've got the time base set up. I've also got a, a DMOD probe, a little homemade uh, rectifier here to, to convert this so I get a nice response curve. Look at my video if you want to see how I've done this, but it's really easy and this is a real great uh, way to uh, get you really close to, uh, to, to dialing this in. You can see I've got variable caps here as I showed. And, you know, what I was able to do is by adjusting the coil uh, inductance by spreading them apart or moving them together and maybe adding a few small caps, I got it really close to, uh, to where I wanted it. The truth is I was really surprised at how uh, closely I came right out of the box based on the uh, online calculator that I used. After I was finished with this, I, I put it on my little mini VNA to uh, get them, you know, to actually measure the final response curve. I'll show you what that looks like. As you saw before, um, the final design, once I finished tuning, I, I included this Q-dope, this uh, dielectric paint on the coils. Once I've dialed them in, I prevent them from moving again. I in installed the uh, filter in this box using uh, uh, F connectors, uh, and I've also included a, a barrier strip uh, connector because I intend to include a couple of bypass relays and a push-to-talk uh, control voltages here to bypass the relay if when I don't need it and also to affect uh, PTT on the other bands. I uh, tend to use my mini VNA or the nano VNA is what it's called. Uh, I always use it uh, together with the PC with a program called Nano Saver. You know, I, I just haven't been comfortable using the little box itself. I mean, heck, it's the size of a credit card. I find it hard to control. But this program, Nano Saver, which is available as freeware, is really, uh, really great. Anyway, uh, when you do this, of course, you need to make sure that you calibrate the 
uh, nano VNA uh, doing an op uh, you know an open short through uh, calibration so that it's normalized. But anyway, here's my results. You know, I do a sweep. In this case, I'm going from 1.5 uh, uh, to 2 uh, megahertz. And, uh, you know, you can see the response curve. And it's, it's great. I mean, heck, I'm down to, I got 70 dB of attenuation at the, um, uh, at the peak of the notch, right where I want to be. In fact, it's at uh, 1826. That's about where I do most of my CQing. And I've got three, uh, 30 dB uh, notches kind of in and around uh, from 1854 down to 1791. So uh, I guess we'll see if this works. I'm not sure if it's going to uh, be enough to uh, prevent crushing the, uh, the SDR, but it sure is a fun project. Anyway, guys, have fun. Don't be afraid to build your own filters. Uh, you know, with the right test equipment, and it's a lot easier than you'd think. 73, Steve, V6WZ.